within the lo Hello everybody, welcome to the video, and today we are pl playing, dang it, we are reacting to the secrets of Syringin. Um, so this is an interesting video, uh, recently on the channel we covered the secrets of Banban, and now we're back with Syringin, which is, you know, you know what I mean, but I must say that Garden of Banban Hate was a really good, you know, game. And now, me and my friend are making a build mode series off of it, in Piggy Build Mode. So, you look forward to that. Um, but anyway, let's just hop right into it, because I'm excited. Turn on captions, just in case. Lower levels of Ban Ban's kindergarten. There exists a very mis- Sorry, I love how it's always, like, dramatic entrance, you know? Deep in the Ban Ban kindergarten, there are just a very mysterious, mysterious and intelligent story. monstrosity. A monstrosity so rich with knowledge about Jivanium, it became Jenom. obsessed <laughs> with what could be done with the substance. And that monstrosity is the Surgeon, as it was codenamed when it was first created. Oh. Oh, wait. It was given a name at one point. The name of the monstrosity is Fuchsia. Color. Wait. No, the name of the monstrosity is Syringin. To say that Syringin changed a lot during development would be an understatement, and I'm here to discuss with you the secrets of our beloved surgeon. The Gart and the Van Van cast each have their own detailed story and personality, and that's what makes Gart and the Van Van unique. Join me on the second episode of the Van Van Chronicles, Narrated by me, Ty Coker, the voice actor of Bitter Giggle, a series where we dedicate each episode to discussing the histories and secrets of a member of the Garden of Ban Ban cast. This is laggy. I hope you feel we're just running. Dang. Bro, Bambolina just knocked over Queso's cake that he was gonna eat. Sorry. Garden of Ban Ban 4 served as the introduction to one of the series' most vital characters yet, where if you completed a set of certain tasks, you would gain access to a secret meeting room with a draw- No, the, the, the best character out of it all is Bitter Giggle, you man. Drawing on the wall depicting a strange figure never seen before, and that figure was Syringin a four-armed, fuchsia-colored, surgeon-like figure whose name consisted of a portmanteau of the words yeah. syringe and yeah. surgeon. But what if I told you that Syringin's final appearance is the last of many iterations that came before it, and Whoa. that he looked very different from when he was first Whoa. sketched? The first iteration of Syringin was first oh, sketched wait, when the Euphoric that. Brothers were playing cards while drawing concepts in a nearby notebook. Liking <laughs> what they doodled and thinking they could make something bigger of it, they got to work. The result was what you are currently seeing on screen. What? This is a recently a recovered Sigma? image of Syringin's first iteration. What is that? It was at this point that this new Dude, character was scary. codenamed What's the you? Surgeon. What's but in, something was Adam wrong Apple? with it. It looked too cute. Yeah, is that Sorry, Syringin Apple? number one. The Surgeon was then given the two cute more cute. arms to give it more surgical tools, and the location of the mouth was readjusted, thinking it would make it much more intimidating in its 3D version. One of these surgical tools was originally going to be a knife or a scalpel, which was then replaced with the mechanical grabbing hand, as it didn't make sense to not give him any way of grabbing objects. And also to make this new character stand out more, its color was changed from the light blue it originally had to the final fuchsia color it currently possesses. As a result of this new color, it was temporarily given the name fuchsia which the name Syringin was later used as a substitute for. Whoever and with that, doing, the Syringin in his 2D form we know today was born, where he later finally debuted in his physical form in Garden of Ban Ban 7, with voice actor Ray O'Hare playing his role, who, as a fun little bonus fact, also played the train conductor yeah, in really the like Forest Brothers' other game, game, Human Apocalypse. But going back to Syringin's 2D form, you might notice coffee. something strange that was quickly pointed out by many fans when Syringin's mural was first seen by the public. 
Take five seconds to try and see why Syringin looked off compared to all other wall murals of the franchise. Oh, his eyes are brown. Do you right? see the problem yet? Huh? Do ya? Huh? That's right. Syringin's eyes were brown. And he was the only one of all other characters that was like this. But rest assured, this has nothing to do with lore. It was a simple oversight, and it was fixed in later games. But early concepts and wrong eye colors aside, what if I told you that Syringin's story was originally going to be much different from what it ended up being in Garden of Ban Ban 7? In fact, the entire chapter originally played out completely different from how the final version of Garden of Ban Ban 7 plays out. The story for the chapter, much like most chapters, went through many different scripts. And while most versions of the script have been lost or deleted, one remains intact. In this early version of the script, the overarching goal of the game remains the same. In alliance with crazy. Syringin, you entered City Engine in search of Jumbo Josh. But City Engine was very different. The mayor of the city was much more tyrannical, where he ruled over his citizens with an iron fist. He was much more reminiscent of a cult leader than a mayor, but he was still willing to work with the player to achieve his goals despite his hatred for humankind. Instead of the fully lit city you enter in Garden of Ban Ban 7, you instead find yourself limited to a single block with long walls enclosing what remains of the city. These walls would constantly be banged on by hungry, naughty ones trapped on the outside, unable to enter because of the light. From the balcony in Syringin's office, you would be able to see a faint light in the distance, which Syringin explains belongs to a tower that Jumbo Josh is nearby. The secondary goal of Garden of Ban Ban 7 would have been to try and reach that second tower. But there was a problem. Aside from the tiny part of the city you're trapped in, everywhere was dark which also meant everywhere else was infested with naughty ones. Through puzzle solving and fighting the notified army one by one, you would slowly but surely restore power to different parts of the city, allowing you to finally reach the tower. Okay. It is during these expeditions to try and restore- Yeah, but I mean... <sighs> Bro, there's too much yapping going on in that game, like honestly. Bro, like, they need to quit the yapping with, you know. But it's kind of cool to see all this stuff. Power that the majority of the action took place. Ow. The Jivanium baby would have been encountered in one of the buildings. Oh, the, the, the notified no, bitter giggle would have... baby is terrifying as heck. Honestly, I'm just going to say that. Like, only because it's dark in that room. But... It have been his own minigame instead of the chase sequence he ended up getting in Garden of Ban Ban 7. Kitty Soros was supposed to have been trapped in a pit that the citizens would have been standing around ceremoniously, where you would help her escape as part of a puzzle. A sequence where you enter a courthouse and Sheriff Toadster judges you for your crimes before the lights go out and helping Bitter Giggle out and then killing him after. The entire building is swarmed with naughty ones. But most interestingly, a crazed Sheriff Toadster was scripted to trap you inside of a grocery store. Inside of which, you would have to get a phone to work. Where what? A grocery store? That's all you can come up with? That's stupid, dude. You call Syringin for help. Whoa. Help. After which, he sends a loud contraption to scare the crazed sheriff away. Not notified, but crazed. This contraption would dramatically slide towards you through the darkness, which turns out to be a loud mobile power generator. After escaping the grocery store, you would use this generator to play a mini-game where you push the generator into dark blocks of the city. Once activated, it would light up the area temporarily, giving you some time to enter and scavenge the nearby buildings for supplies that would allow you to fix power boxes that would light up the area permanently. Mm -hmm. But you gotta do it quickly because the generator only stays on for a few minutes, and if it deactivates, the block goes dark again and it would require you to reactivate it again manually. So, if it goes dark while you're scavenging in a building... Before getting murdered brutally by a naughty one. Too bad. Wait, what'd he say? It goes dark while you're scavenging in a building. Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. What you are seeing on the screen right now is an unused location that was meant to be one of those blocks that you restore the power to. There were three blocks that this needed to be done for. 
And when all three were successfully done, that's when you finally reach the tower you could see from Syringin's balcony. But once you make it to the tower, you discover that Jumbo Josh is suspiciously nowhere to be seen. Josh was Upon not returning here. to Syringin, his true plans are revealed. When you return to find him in a scrapped location that was meant to be the city's public park, you find him standing on a platform raised high above ground. This is where the conversation between Syringin and Sir Dadadu would have originally taken place. And after tricking and trapping Sir Dadadu with the scepter piece, he gives a villainous speech explaining how he used you to do the hard part and get enough power delivered to the city to get the machine that's trapping Jumbo Josh to work before the center of the platform opens and an elevator holding a chained Jumbo Josh is raised from the ground. What? And this is where the chapter concludes as it was originally meant to end. As with the last Ban Ban Chronicles episode, please do let us know your thoughts about this original version of the script. This sequence of events turned out to be much cooler on paper wow. than it was a playable experience. I feel like and that's that why this version of the script really was cool. scrapped for the most Except part. For the, like, but wait. Way. What? Either way, uh, we got betrayed by uh, Syringe in either way, so like it doesn't really matter. <laughs> that in the distance. <laughs> You know what? That Stay up. tuned for the next episode of the Ban Ban Chronicles, we'll where the funny. secrets and history of another character will be revealed. Comment keep down below which character you want to learn more about next, and say it with me, keep on Ban Banning! Oh, uh, I thought he was going to say, like, Ban Banning, is that even a word? Anyway, if I had to pick, I really want one off of Jumbo Josh or Stinger Flynn. But yeah, that was the video. I hope y'all enjoyed. Uh, that was a good thing. You know, my thoughts on it are like, you know, some things in that video could have been, oops, could have been done. Uh, there's only one thing that I wish they probably would have kept is that one ending with Jumbo Josh chained up. That would have been really interesting for a cliffhanger. Um, I'm glad they didn't end Garden of Bam Bam 7 off on an elevator. I'm kind of impressed. Um, and I'm glad that they fixed, like, before doing that supermarket, the Sheriff Toadster Judge thing. Because, oh, that probably would have been a waste of time. So, um, y'all have a good day. I will see y'all later. Garden of Piggy. <laughs> Garden of Piggy premieres tomorrow on Micah's channel at 12 p.m. I'm going to be there, hopefully. See y'all later.